So now I'm going to describe the visible and palpable regions of the um, pelvic limb. So first of all, we have the different regions of the pelvic limb, and we have the pelvic region with the cluteal region in this area. Then we have the femoral region, the stifle joint region. Distally to the stifle joint region, we have the crural region, which is here, the tarsal region, then the metatarsal region, and the phalangeal region. So starting in the pelvic region, we have different bony structures in this region, which we can easily palpate. And these are going to be the tuba coxi, tuba sacrali, and in between these two, we're going to have the iliac crest. This is the gluteal region. We are going to have the superficial and middle gluteal muscles in this area. And moving cordally, just here we're going to have the tuba ischium. Just above the tuba ischium, we can feel the sacrotuberous ligament just there. Okay. And this is going to be our hip joint region. So if we palpate, we can feel the greater trochanter of the femur, which is there. The femur articulates with the pelvis in this area. So it's the femoral head articulating with the acetabulum of the pelvis. The femur is projected distally. Okay to articulate with the tibia and fibula and also the patella, just there. Okay. Cranially to the femoral bone, we are going to have the quadriceps muscle, which is all that muscle there. The quadricep muscle inserts onto the patella bone, just there, and we can feel the insertion of this muscle onto the patella bone. Um, in this region, in this stifle region, we can also palpate very easily the patella ligament, just there. Okay. And going back to the thigh region, we've talked about the quadriceps muscle and distally, we are going to have the, ven um, eventually to the femoral, femoral head, and the femur bone, we're going to have the biceps femoris muscle. The biceps femoris muscle is part of the hamstrings together with the semi-tendinous and the semimembranous muscles, which are going to be in the medial, in the caudal and medial aspects of the thigh region of the pelvic limb. This area, we also have the popliteal region with the popliteal lymph node which is very important to have in mind clinically when we're doing our routine examination. So it is important to have in mind that on the medial side of the thigh, we have the femoral triangle. The femoral triangle is um, a space in between the sartorius muscle cranially and the pectineus muscle caudally. This is difficult to show on the video, but if you place your hand in this triangle, you are going to be able to feel the femoral pulse. In this triangle, we have important um, structures, which are the femoral artery, the femoral vein, and the saphenous nerve. Moving distally, we are going to have the crural region, where we have the tibia, and the fibula laterally. Okay. These muscles here are going to be the extensor muscles on this region and the flexor muscles here as well. It is important to note that the um, majority of muscles in this area are laterally, whereas we haven't got any muscles practically on the medial side of this region. So moving distally as well, we have to note the saphenous vein just there, which is important clinically. And we also have the common calcaneal tendon moving down onto the calcaneus. 
just there. In this region, in the tarsal region, um, the most prominent feature, apart from the calcaneus, is the, we have the malleoli. So the lateral malleoli is going to be part of the fibula, whereas the medial malleoli is going to be part of the tibia. Moving distally, we have the metatarsal region with the different metatarsal bones and also the phalangeal region. This metatarsal and phalangeal region is exactly the same to the metacarpal and phalangeal regions of the forelimb. The only difference is that in the forelimb we have uh, the carpal pad, whereas we don't have a tarsal pad. I'm now going to talk about the joint dynamics of the pelvic limb. The first joint uh, that we have in the pelvic limb is the hip joint, which is just there. The hip joint can flex and extend. And we also have to have in mind um, the abduction movement, which is um, separating the pelvic limb away from the body, and adduction, which is going to be moving the limb closer to the body. The next joint that we have is the pelvic, um, sorry, the stifle joint, which is there, and we can flex and extend the stifle joint. And then moving distally in the pelvic limb, there is something that we have to have in mind, and that is that the extensor muscles of the tarsus are going to be situated caudal, on the caudal side of the um, pelvic limb, whereas the flexor muscles, the flexor tendons, are going to be located cranially. This is completely the opposite to the forelimb, where the um, extensor muscles of the carpus are going to be cranially there, and the flexor muscles of the carpus are going to be caudal. When we get to the phalangeal region, we have the extensor tendons of the phalangeal region on the dorsal side, and the flexor tendons on the plantar side of the pelvic limb. So I am now going to describe the perineal region. We can divide the perineal region into areas. So we have the anal region and the urogenital region. So in the anal region, we're going to have the anus, which is there. And we can also note the ischiorectal fossa on both sides. Uh, clinically important are the anal sacs, which are going to be in turn, internally in this area. And in the urogenital region, it is important to note that this is going to be the site for the roots of the penis. And we can also see the scrotum here. In this dog in particular, we can only feel and palpate one testicle inside the scrotum. This is then a monorchid dog. Okay, so he has a cryptorchid testicle which will still, which hasn't descended, so it's still inside the abdomen.